Boss, today I want to have a conversation with you about business emergency loans for giant amounts and what you need to know and what nobody has told you before. In today's conversation, I will be spilling a lot of beans, so I want you to stick around till the end of today's conversation. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I am doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great and blessed as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to speak to you about business emergency loans for large amount, what you need to do, okay, what you need to know also to get approved ASAP. Okay, so here are the steps, boss, and I want you to listen, okay? So first thing first. Legitimacy. You gotta have a legit business. When is somebody's gonna tell people to have a legit business? People walk around the neighborhood and telling everybody, you know, I'm a, I'm a CEO of my business. But when you actually start digging, you realize they, they just have a shell, a shell company. We're talking here about serious stuff here, boss. If you are, if you are a boss, I want you to be a boss of a legit business. Don't you try to razzle dazzle me with, you know, I filed my my paperwork with the state. The state it took, it's taken for a while, whatever. I haven't received my paperwork yet. Hey, listen, hey, hey, hey! I want you to really make sure that you have a legal structure. So when we talk about business, you need to have a legal structure, an LLC, an LP, a C corp, an S corp, and whatnot. Totally up to you. And I want you to really have a business plan because the lender is going to look at you and say, okay, you know, th this, this entrepreneur has some serious stuff okay so you got to have a business plan very important make sure that you have your certificate of good standing normally when you file the paperwork with the state either uh, it, and it, it's pretty standard across the, the nation though your state authorities will send you a certificate of good standing that proves that your company is in good standing in other words you are complying with all the rules and regulations that really matter in your state and very important this is quite essential Okay, certificate of good standing. Make sure that you have a business checking account. Everything I'm telling you is the foundation of a strong application form when you are looking for a business emergency loan. It is the fulcrum, it is the foundation, okay? Make sure that you have your EIN. Cause, daughter, I'm talking to you. I want you to, I want you to listen. Don't you walk around, you are walking away from me and I'm telling you important stuff. I want you to come back and really listen that you need to have your EIN. You know what is it? What was that? What what? That's your employer identification number. It's just like a your social security for your company. And you get that from the IRS. Okay, so this is actually a series of things that will help your company project an air of legitimacy. So when we talk about what makes a company legit, this is what it is: legal structure, business plan, certificate of good standing, business checking account, EIN. There are other things, but those five. Are pretty quintessential. The second thing I want you to have, and boss, I'm I'm really serious here because we got to stop the the whole series of people being rejected when they apply for emergency business loans. Okay, one thing you need to have here, you need to have projected financial statements. So basically, when you have, a, let's say. Your company is making money or not making money it doesn't really matter because when we talk about projections we are not talking about the, the past or the or the present we are having a conversation about what the future right and so ju just make sure that you have you prepare projected financial statements that actually paint a positive picture about your business okay and please make sure those elements those data are realistic don't you try to razzle dazzle the, the lender with the numbers that are not realistic okay because are you okay? And so when I'm talking about financial statements, I'm talking about something called balance sheets. I'm talking about cash flows. I'm talking about income statement. I'm talking about stockholder equity. And basically, if everything I'm talking about today sounds like a, a foreign language to you, I want you to make sure that you talk to someone who is well-versed, somebody who is expert in the things I'm talking to you about, okay? And you don't have to spend a fortune. People think when we talk about projections, financial projections, you got to spend $1,000 and no, 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 hoo, 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 hoo. you can actually get 
all these things done for two hundred dollars two hundred dollars one hundred dollars okay you can go on the internet or you can just try to hook up with a local accountant you don't even need to have a cpa because we're talking here about uh you know projections of a small business so you don't have to have a cpa do that for you okay so big decision time boss big decision time grandpa grandma everybody here everybody hey hey everybody's here okay make sure that you have your projection your projections financial projections my question to you is when are you going to do it who is going to do it for you are you financially astute are you financially illiterate do you understand what i'm talking about if not try to make sure you secure an expert to help you out this is very important and i don't want no if and buts whatever i don't have I, I don't want no excuses don't you try to confuse me with excuses i don't want hey listen the lender is not, is not going to take excuses from you so why are you trying to trying to confuse me with excuses just get it done that's all get it done you can go on, on the internet you have a web fiverr you have upwork you have top down you have freelancer.com those are the freelancer website where you can have people who have a uh, a background in financial accounting and reporting that could help you out alternatively you can even have a you can use like an accounting software tool you know you're talking about expensify you have zero you have uh, quickbooks and whatnot the third thing i want you to make sure that hey we are still having a conversation about what business emergency loans for large amounts in other words cash is tight and you are trying to survive, right? You need to, you need to have cash within 24 hours or 48 hours. That's actually the premise of today's conversation, boss. Okay. So the third thing I want you to pay attention to is your cash flows. So make sure that your cash flows, your future cash flows, or your current cash flows are positive. See, anytime we talk about cash flows, people think we are just speaking about poetry. We are having a conversation about lyricism. We are having a theoretical conversation. No. Because you are you are asking for an emergency business loan. And my question to you is, where are you going to get the cash to repay the loan? If you don't have a clear idea about your cash flows, either future or current, where are you going to get your the cash flows to, to repay the lender? And I'm, I'm asking you tough questions. You might be thinking, you know, why is, it, why is this guy just bothering me with questions like this, whatever, whatever. And my answer to you is, if you don't answer me, you're going to answer the lender anyway. The lender is going to ask your ass to tell him or her where you're going to derive the cash that you will you'll be using to repay the loan. So you better have a clear idea. You better have a, a stellar, a lucid idea about what you're going to, where you're going to get the cash from. So when we talk about cash flows, you need to determine where the cash is coming from. Is it coming from operating activities? Is it coming from investing activities? Is it coming from financing activities? So th this is the trifecta. This is the triptych that you need to pay attention to. So when we talk about cash flows at the business level, we are speaking about primarily about a financial report called the statement of cash flows. And that statement has three important parts. Okay. Operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Okay. And this is how you convince the lender that, hey, listen, I think I'll be able, I'll be in a better position to repay you no matter what. Okay. So money, 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 ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Boss, cuz, talk to me. When are you, where are you going to get your cash flow from? When is somebody's going to be seriously asking the question? Because if nobody asking you, I'm asking you today. And, and listen, I don't care if you just, uh, if you just uh, walk away from me or whatever you, cause I'm just bothering you, you know, well, you know, you can do whatever, you can say whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter you know why because i want you to win i want you to get to get the emergency business loan approved that's what i care about that's what i care about and this is what you you should care about too okay you run like a, you are running a business you are running a company and you need to pay staff or you probably will run the business by yourself but either way if cash is tight you better find a way to get the cash to get your business running very important The, the fourth thing I want you to think about, boss, and I, I want you to be very serious about this one, too, because a lot of folks just sort of underestimate it, but it's, it's, it's really quintessential. So we are still having a conversation about business emergency loans for large amounts. What you need to know and that nobody probably told you before is that your business prospects are really important. OK, those are of paramount importance. Why? 
because you need to talk about the prospects of your business. I'm talking about internal trends here, okay? I'm talking about your client lineup. I'm talking about product in the pipeline. What is your R&D? Are you providing services? Are you providing a product? Are you doing e-commerce online? Are you selling online? You got to have a, you got to be in a situation where you have clear answers to all this, uh, all these problems. Not problems, but all those topics, okay? Because there's a strong correlation between your ability to explain those important topics and your chances of clinching the business loan, the emergency business loan you want and need. Okay, cause th- that's what it is. You know, and I'm talking to you, uncle. Uh, hey, hey, uncle, uncle, I want you to respond to me. Okay, talk to me about the internal trends in your company. Talk to me about your top 10 or your top five clients. Talk to me about your accounts payable agent reports. How about that? Talk to me about your accounts receivable agent reports. Are you able to collect on your accounts receivable, aka your customers? Are you able to, co- to pay your vendors on time, your accounts payable on time? Are you able to do that? Because those are questions that you're going to have to answer the lender anyway. I mean, listen, you know, this ain't no game. You know, I want you to stop going to a, a business loan application and being blind and being oblivious to what really matters, to being ignorant about what really matters. I, w- I want to empower you. I want you to have all, all, the, all the answers that you need so that when you walk into that room, Everybody be like, oh, wow, here it comes the king or queen of glory. <laughs> you know, you could just walk around and just say, because you are so confident. You have all the all the information because information is power. It is power. Okay. So here are some pro tips. When you analyze your business in and out, I want you to really pay attention to three things. Who are your top five or 10 clients? Okay. Are you able to pay your, your suppliers on time? And basically, the third thing is that, what, what are your expansion, I would say, ideas? Do you see the company actually expanding five years from now, three years from now, or 10 years from now? You got to be optimistic, though, but you also got to be realistic. Very important. I want to talk to you now about a subject that is uh, closely closely related to the one I spoke to you before about and that is your industry trends okay so when we talk about emergency business loan for giant amounts we are still talking about an ability your ability to convince the lender that you will be in a situation where you can repay the loan okay so before we we actually analyze the situation internally right that's what we call in our research we call it endogenous research endogenous analysis now we are going to look at the exogenous analysis the external elements that they have an effect upon your company so that's the industry yeah you probably in, you are in an industry and the question is how are your are your rivals faring out are this truck are this scraping by are they making money are they generate are they generating cash flows quarter over quarter over quarter talk to me about that has your industry experienced recently a boom or bust Okay, and uh, what about the, your five year? What about the five year trends in your industry? Those are those are um, pivotal questions that you're gonna have to answer. Those are questions that the lender will ask you anyway. So I want you to be prepared. I want you to have logic. I want you to have a plan. I want you to have a program where you can answer those questions. You know what? Expertly, you can answer those questions excellently. You can answer you can answer those questions confidently. So my question to you is, what is going on in your, in your industry? What are the press reports saying? What are the media? Well, what is the media saying? What are expert opinions about your industry? Are things rosy or lethargic? Talk to me about that, okay? And, and, and the thing, and, hey, listen, hey, boy, 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 you gotta be prepared. It's like you go into a job interview. See, the whole thing is people don't understand when you go to a a, a business loan application interview. It's like you go into a job interview. You know why? Because the lender is giving you his or her money. It's the same thing as an employer. The employer is trying is thinking if is trying to see if you are the right candidate that he can give his or his or her money to every two weeks or every every week or whatever or every month. Okay. So here is the approach you want to follow. You want to analyze your industry through press reports. Okay. You want to read as much research about your industry as possible. You want to collect expert opinions so you have a clear idea 
or what's really happening in your industry okay and ideally you want to have a clear idea about the, the, the last five years so when we analyze a, an industry or a sector for that matter we always pay attention to the five-year trend the historical five-year trend because if you are able to understand the past you can at least confidently predict the present and also the future i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about emergency business loans for large amounts and how do you actually clinch, how do you get that loan? I mean, this is important. I mean, a lot of folks are entrepreneurs. A lot of folks have businesses. Yeah, there are single member LLCs. They're trying to, trying to make ends meet, but we need to provide the right info. Somebody has to step up and give the right info to folks so that when they apply for a business loan, they are going to get it. And that's what I care about. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what my team is trying to do here. Okay. So we are speaking about finding the right lender. See, boss, you are trying to get a business emergency loan for a giant amount. Not every lender will actually accommodate you. First of all, I want you to forget about banks and credit unions. Those are very risk averse. Okay. Historically, they're risk averse and they're not going to help you. So you really have only two choices. You have a online lenders and you have uh, alternative lenders when we talk about online lenders you have uh, direct lenders such as bluevine for lines of credit okay or you can go to uh, you can go to uh, cabbage okay or so those are like uh, online lenders but you also have loan marketplaces you have lender marketplaces so we're talking about lendio for instance okay and that's one part the second part is you have uh, w w what we call alternative lenders okay so those more those those, can, those actually lenders can have can, can help you out i'm speaking about kalamata group okay i'm speaking about um toro capital okay so you want to check their better business bureau okay the, the rating the triple b rating their trust pilot rating you want to how you want to find out how flexible the lender is very important do some background research on the company. I want you to really dig as much as you can about the company, okay? And you you want to try to compare lenders, okay? The good the good thing is if you apply with an online lender, they they all have, and we have tested all of them. Ninety nine percent of them have a soft pull process in place. So basically, you can actually test the waters and see what you could qualify for, okay? So compare the lenders. So you want to work with a lender that offers exceptional customer service and that really understands your industry. Okay, and you also want to make sure that you evaluate the types of loans the lender offers. It's it's very important to have a clear idea to familiarize yourself with uh, the type of the loan typology, the type of loans that the lender offers. Okay, this is really really important. The last thing I want you to do, if you're trying to get a an emergency business loan for giant amounts and you're trying to really get it real fast is to work on your FICO score oh yeah this is really important because uh, see the thing is that a lot of folks believe that hey listen I I'm just going to to uh, make sure I have a stable I have a stable personal credit score and I'm just going to make sure that I build my credit so that uh, when I apply for a loan and uh, I can just get you know I'm going to try to have a, a paid X of a paid X of a 80 or 85 and even if my FICO score is around 550 it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm just trying to trying to get business loan anyway it doesn't work that way boss it doesn't work that way unless you are able to establish a pure EIN only relationship you are going to get your your personal FICO score pulled when you apply for a business emergency loan okay so this is really important so when we talk about your personal FICO it's really important to understand that you you need to constantly check your credit reports for accuracy okay so also you want to make sure that you always pay your credit accounts on time your credit cards your lines of credit your uh, your, your loans your home equity lines of credit everything that relates to credit you have to pay it on time it's important and also trying to really lower your credit utilization ratio your cur we always talk about that this is quite essential because you want to be in a situation where you are, you are able to control how much you're spending and you're able to pay off your balance in full okay 
and take care of credit accounts that have been sent to collections. People always forget those, but those are important because, uh, you know, accounts that were sent to collection, that doesn't mean that those accounts have disappeared. They're still there. They are lingering in the background. They are in limbo and they have an, an uh, adversarial effect, a negative impact on your credit score. Okay. And you always want to try to optimize your account age, credit mix, and credit inquiries. What I'm trying to say here is that, hey, listen, you better stop applying for credit cards all the time. Like crazy people apply for three credit cards on a day, four credit cards on a day. What's up with that? What's up with that? Hey, listen. Hey, hey. No, no, no. Stop that. Apply for credit cards strategically. Okay. And this is really important. So credit cards, credit card, credit cards. Boss, my question to you is, how are you using credit cards right now to improve your FICO score? Your personal FICO score. You need to have a, a good FICO score if you're trying to get a business emergency loan for a giant amount. This is really important. Okay. So you better start doing that now. Not, not later. Not, not yesterday. Not tomorrow. I mean today. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about emergency business loan for giant amounts and what you need to know and what nobody has told you before. So we spoke about legitimacy, projected financials, your cash flows, business prospects, industry trends, having the, the right lender, and uh, making sure that you have a high FICO score. Those are quite essential. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless you. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.